All right, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to build big in Valheim without annoying lag. Here in the Valheim community, instead of lag referring to high ping like in FPS shooters, it instead implies low game performance. This low game performance can be shown with the frame rate and when your game turns into a stop motion film after building too much. Before we get started, there is also another metric besides FPS that is built into Valheim that you can use to gauge your performance, that is the instance count. You can check your instance count at any time by pressing F2. This measures how many pieces exist within an area, including the things that are there when you arrive, and also the things that you place. The higher the instance count, the lower the performance of the game, which is why all of the four methods we'll be going over are about lowering instances. Also, I used all four of these methods in my latest build on the channel, so just a heads up, we're going to be using that build for examples throughout the video. Alright, let's get started with method number one. The first method is about the land that you are working with. When you know that you're going to build big, the best thing you can do for yourself is to clear the land of everything that is there. This includes bushes, rocks, trees, dead trees, logs, etc. If you are using the world edit mod, you can use the extra hoe feature called remove to get rid of everything very quickly. If you are playing vanilla Valheim, you will have to do this by hand with the regular tools, or you can spawn in the cheat sword to help you do this more quickly. Speaking of playing vanilla Valheim, you will want to keep in mind that you cannot bring back certain things without dev commands or mods like rocks, bushes, dead trees, and logs for example. This is important because typically once a project is done, it will be nice to come through and add some nature elements back into the build if it wouldn't be too many instances for your computer to handle. For my computer, around 20,000 instances is really the max amount of building I can do before the gameplay and the recordings are negatively affected. You can see here for the underground build, I cleared a massive area near the build and also around the build because I knew that it was going to be a very large build. If you want to leave more of the land the way it is to keep kind of that natural look, then you should focus more on the biome that you choose to work in instead of clearing the land. Each biome in the game has a different innate instance density. Black Forest, for example, is the most lush environment in the game, but that also means that it has the highest instance density when you arrive. Here are some notes on each of the biomes to help you choose. The meadows are dense with instances in the forest, but they also have spaces that are more open that you could take advantage of. Whereas the swamp is more densely packed everywhere, meaning that you will always have a decent amount of instances. Then you have the plains and the mountains, which are more sparsely filled with instances. And then you have the mistlands, which I would only recommend building near the shore or near the islands where the instance count is very low and there is less mist. This brings up another point that when building near the ocean, every biome, except the mountain biome which only spawns inland, has less instances because one side will just be water. Alright, now let's talk about using the correct build pieces. For starters, you will want to always use the larger build pieces when possible. In general, you will use smaller pieces for cool designs, odd number lengths and builds, or to get a certain type of look, but otherwise the highlighted pieces here should be used when you are trying to keep instances down in a massive build. The wood pieces and iron cage pieces are obvious, but you might not think to use ladders over stairs to go higher with less pieces, although they are notably more jarring when using. And stone and black marble, for example, have some larger pieces which might be obvious to use, but sometimes in a build you can't even see the brick laying pattern, so maybe there you could use larger stone or black marble pieces instead. Sometimes you can use stone pillars instead of stone cubes going vertically. And stone and black marble floors are great for saving instances on floors and on ceilings. Now when it comes to using correct build pieces, there is one thing with black marble that is an absolute game changer. In my underground build, I used black marble column three instead of what would normally be four black marble cubes. And I also used black marble floor large instead of what would normally be 16 black marble floor pieces or cubes. You can see that I used these pieces everywhere throughout the build. In fact, on every single building that I made. These two pieces probably saved me thousands of instances in total, and that's why I recommend using them when you're working with black marble. 
They are the easiest to work with if you have the Infinity Hammer mod where you can select them with your hammer. Alright, now it's time to work with your terrain. Anywhere that you can replace walls and floors with raised terrain, you can save instances. When it comes to floors, you can use dirt or grass for outdoor builds or cobble pattern floors for indoor builds for example. Now for walls, we can use the underground build for an example and you can see that the back walls of all the buildings are actually terrain. This means that once again I found a way to save thousands of instances, but this time I did it by replacing the back walls of my builds. If you're building a mega build, there are of course a lot of buildings, so this definitely adds up. You can apply this technique to any mega build, by building into a hill or a mountain, or by digging down and building underground. You can do this without mods easily with your pickaxe and your hoe. At some point though, you will reach the game's terrain raise and lower limitations, making this technique less useful. This is why, for example, I had to use the height map mod in my underground build to raise and lower ground without limitations. In a moment, I'm going to show you a game exploit that I discovered a while back to remove the terrain height limitations without any mods needed. First though, let me show you how I did it more precisely with mods with the underground build. I used the height map mod, like I said, to get rid of those pesky terrain limitations, and then I used the hoe tool in the world edit mod and the nudge feature in the infinity hammer mod to terraform my build site. You can see that with the level ground feature, like normal, I'll level the ground, but now if I nudge upward 30 meters and then click level, this time the ground will level to that height. The same thing will happen if I do this to negative 30 meters, but going down into the ground. You can see how this would very quickly create mini walls to back up a build into to save instances. But what if you don't want to use mods? All right, so the first thing that happened is that I needed to make a shipwreck. While looking through the directory for pieces for a shipwreck, I spawned in something that is called ship underscore construction. This turned out to raise the ground to whatever height that I was at, no matter what that height was. I went on to tell Dakar about this, but honestly, at the time, I didn't think much of it. When 9byte told me about this, I thought I would do some experimenting. After a while, I realized not only can you raise the ground, but you can also lower the ground with this method. And once again, it will move to whatever height you're at, no matter what. Which means, just by spawning in the ship underscore construction, without any mods, you can completely get rid of the terrain height limitations in the game. Now, you can see how we ended up putting this into action in our testing. But unfortunately, there is a catch. Each time, you have to wait for the ship to go into a second state. And at that point, you can delete it and the terrain modifications will stay. If you delete it before then, the terrain will reset, and this adds a lot of time to the process, unfortunately. I would also later find out that if you try to stack this twice in the same area, that the result is disastrous at best. But if you have a lot of time on your hands to wait on each of the ships, and you also don't need to stack these in the same spot, then this would be the choice for you, and you wouldn't have to use a mod. Alright, finally we can finish it up by working with rocks. Working with iron, you can see that you would have 10 instances here on the left to support the stone pillars. But here on the right, you can see that by placing just one rock or one instance, you can build to the same height. Not to mention iron caps out at 50 meters, and these rocks can be spawned in endlessly, meaning that you can build far past the normal height limitations of the game. At this point, you're probably thinking, but yeah, I don't really want a massive rock in the middle of my build. If you are not using mods, you will want to spawn in the rock destructible test, which is a cluster of rocks that you can then break down to only one rock with your pickaxe, and then you can build over. If you are using the infinity hammer mod, you can choose from many of the large rocks in the console, spawn one into your hammer, and then scale it down quickly with the scroll wheel and conceal it in your build. And actually using rocks can go even one step further. In my underground build, you can see that I used large stones as the floors to the kingdom. This once again saved me thousands of instances because this time I didn't have to make a floor out of stone or black marble. With Infinity Hammer, select your large rock and then type into the console hammer scale xyz. Choosing numbers 111 will keep the rock the same size. X value is left to right, Y value forward to back, and Z value is vertical. 
So to create the floor piece that I used, you would use hammer scale 110.01, making the rock as flat as a pancake. All right, so I tried to make sure that I had ways to do this with mods and without mods throughout the video, but if you are interested in the mods that I use, they are all linked in the description. It's recommended that you use Infinity Hammer, Server Dev Commands, and also World Edit together as they are designed that way. If you learned something from the video, consider subscribing or maybe even becoming a channel member to help me keep the lights on and keep making these videos. That's it though, thank you very much for watching, more coming soon, and I'll see you in the next one.